Hi, this is Andy from Rookie Investor, and in this video we will analyze how to read a balance sheet. A balance sheet is a part of the financial statement that reports the company's assets, liabilities, and shareholder equity. The other two core parts to look for in a financial statement are the income statement and the cash flow, which we will analyze in different videos. In this video, we will go over the few balance sheets, the importance of them, how to analyze them, and what are the key metrics you need to focus on. First, let me start by saying that you can access any balance sheet of a publicly listed company and many websites aside from the company's own website will provide the information. The easiest way to access a balance sheet of a company is either through Yahoo Finance, once on the company's page, click Financials and then Balance Sheets, or on Trading View, which again you click Financial, Statements and then Balance Sheet. There are a plethora of investment-related websites where you can get this information and also you can visit the website of the company and find them there. All the companies post their quarterly financial statements and of course their 10k forms, which Balance Sheet is a part of. So now that you know where to find the balance sheet, let's talk about its importance, the main parts of the statement and of course the key metrics to focus on. As mentioned earlier, balance sheet is one of the three key financial statements that companies report each quarter to the public and of course their shareholders. It gives investors a very strong insight in the company's financial position, what the company owns and what it owes. Balance sheets are separated into three main sectors, assets, liabilities, and shareholders' equity. For this video, I will use a TradingView website to go over a few companies' balance sheets, starting with Amazon. As you can see, I'm already in the balance sheet of Amazon. You have the option to see the annual version or the quarterly version as mentioned earlier. We will go with the annual one. Every balance sheet starts with the total assets, which basically reveals the value of everything the company owns and can be liquidated into cash within 12 months time. That can be inventory, accounts receivable, equipment, copyrights, patents, and obviously cash on hand. Liabilities on the other hand are the legal debts a company owes to third-party creditors. These can be employee salaries, mortgage payments, loan payments, sales taxes, and so on. Last we find the equity or shareholders equity which is basically what the company is worth after the company is liquidated and all the debts are paid off. Thus, the shareholders' equity equals assets minus liabilities. Now that we have analyzed the three basic components of a balance sheet, let me say that for a healthy and a strong company financially, the investors want to see that shareholders' equity is always positive. That means that the company has more assets than liabilities. There are exceptions, but best you stick with the companies that have a positive equity. Do note here that another term used for shareholders' equity is book of value. Now that we covered the three main categories on the balance sheet, let's dive a bit more into it and check the subcategories. Starting with the assets, they are separated into two subcategories, the current assets and the non-current assets. Current assets refers to all the assets of a company that can be liquidated to cash easily or are expected to be sold, consumed, or used through business operations within 12 months or a year. Examples of current assets are cash, stocks, inventory, accounts receivable, and so on. And if you expand the subcategories of the total current assets, you will see the cash, short-term investments, account receivable, and inventory are indeed there. And this goes for all the companies, not just for the Amazon that we're looking at the moment. All these assets can be easily turned into cash within the time frame of a year. Non-current assets, on the other hand, refers to the assets that the company owes but it does not plan to sell consume or liquidate in other means over the next 12 months or a year time frame. These are long-term investments, property plan and equipment, as well as the intangible assets. I would like to expand a bit more on these assets and especially on goodwill, as it is associated with the purchase of one company by another. That means that the company can grow its goodwill value by purchasing other companies. For Amazon, as you can see, the figure has grown exponentially over the past six years, and from $3.76 billion is now $15.02 billion as the end of 2021. For example, let's assume Amazon wants to buy ABC company that is valued at $10 billion, but it pays $12 billion for it. That means that Amazon overpaid $2 billion to acquire the ABC company. That $2 billion will be added to the goodwill on the balance sheet. One main point to keep from this section is that since goodwill is basically a company overpaying for another company, 
For many investors, it's not considered as a real asset, and that goes for the entire intangible assets as they are consisted of assets like company's brand name, solid customer base, good customer relationship, good employee relationship, and proprietary technology. You can't really liquidate those, but they still have value. I mean, think about Apple products. The value of the brand name and the customer base there is insane. To note here that now that we talked about the intangible assets and goodwill, it is a good practice to remove them when you calculate the shareholder's equity. This will give you a much better, or as I like to see it, a much clearer view on the financials of the company. In our case, when you look at Amazon, their intangible assets are at $20.4 billion for 2021. If we subtract that number from the total equity, the new shareholder's equity number we get is roughly around $117.4 billion. That is also called a tangible book of value and many investors are paying more attention to that number than the actual equity number given on the reports. Anyhow, that concludes our closer look into the asset subcategories. Let's turn our attention to the liabilities. Once more, we have current and non-current liabilities. Like the current assets, current liabilities refer to the company's debts or obligations that have to be paid within 12 months or a year. As we can see on the balance sheet, examples of current liabilities are short-term debt, account payables, dividends, income taxes, and so on. Again, current liabilities is the money that the company will have to pay over the next 12 months. The non-current liabilities is the company's long-term debts that will need to be paid but it is not within the next 12 months. Examples of long-term debt are long-term loans, long-term lease obligations, pension benefits, deferred taxes, liabilities, and so on. In most cases, checking the total assets and total liabilities is a good start, and good enough for some people. However, it is a good practice to dig a bit more. I especially like to check where the majority of total liabilities come from. Is it from current or non-current liabilities? Because if a company has a high amount of long-term debt, and their total assets are not in that great shape, how would the company be able to pay back its debts? And they will have to pay them back one way or another, so in that case, an investment to that company wouldn't be such a good idea. Now that you have a much better understanding of the balance sheet, let's focus on the key metrics you want to look in order to determine if the company is in good standing or is in trouble. And since we are in shareholders' equity, let's start from here. The first point of focus is that we want to see the shareholders' equity number growing. And in this case, Amazon is a perfect example of a healthy company. Their equity has been growing year after year and from around 13 billion in 2015 is at about 140 billion at the end of the last year. Their intangible assets such as goodwill increased as well, but again, if you do the subtraction, you will notice that the tangible shareholders' equity is on a very strong rise. That means that Amazon is growing at its assets on a faster pace than its liabilities. You will probably notice that the total liabilities are growing as well each year and that it's totally normal as the company expands and acquires companies, the cost of operations liabilities in general is growing. However, as long as the total assets grow and the shareholders' equity is on a par with them, there is nothing to worry, as it is absolutely normal. Companies get loans, hire more people, acquire land, and so on to expand. So once more, as long as the tangible shareholders' equity grows over the time, the increase of liabilities is not an issue. The second point of focus is to check the current ratio. To do that, we divide the total current assets with the total current liabilities. For Amazon, that would be the 161.58 billion divided with 142.27 billion. The number that we will get is the current ratio, and in this case is 1.13. Current ratio is important as it measures the company's ability to pay its obligation within the span of 12 months or a year. You always want to see a number above 1 here, which means that currently, the company has more current assets than current liabilities. In general, the higher the number is, the better the company stands. Current ratio is a very important metric for the financial health of each company and you should always pay attention to it. A third point of focus is to check if over the years certain total cash and total current assets are growing. For Amazon, their cash grew from 16.18 billion to 36.48 billion, while their total current assets skyrocketed from 35.7 billion to 161.58 billion. And you always want to check both as a company could liquidate non-current assets 
to increase its cash position without increasing its total current assets, so always pay attention to both. Now that we're familiar with the balance sheet and the key points you need to focus on, let's check one company for practice. We will use Netflix as an example. Netflix has been a company that thrived the past decade and their shareholders' equity grew exponentially from $2.2 billion to $15.8 billion, which according to what we learned today, it is a great thing. However, paying a closer look to Netflix, we will spot a red flag based on what we learned today. Their total current assets are lower than their current liabilities for 2021. And to be precise, their current ratio was at 0.95, which is a red flag. The below one current ratio for Netflix means that the company does not have enough current liquid assets to pay off its current debts for the next year. So it is in a weak financial situation. And as you probably know, it was after the last quarter report of the year came out that Netflix stock really dived in price. The last point to check is their current assets and cash on hand. As we can see, their cash on hand took a significant dive of 2 billion in 2021, which is not a good sign. You could say that this happened back in 2016, but if you look closer, you will notice that the total current assets increased that year compared to 2021, that they declined as well. In addition to that, their total current liabilities continue to grow at a steady pace. Netflix only passes one out of three key points, so you can make your own conclusions. Obviously, there are more financial reports to check prior thinking of investing in a company, and those are the income statement and the cash flow, which we analyzed on other videos. You can find them on the description or on the video cards. I hope that this video really helped you familiarize yourself with balance sheets and the key points to look at. If it did, please hit the like button and if you're interested in more content, make sure you subscribe.